Welcome back everybody to our Virtual Piano Kids World Tour. I'm Captain Joe. And I'm Admiral Emily. We're going to be traveling to the other side of the world today to the country of China to learn about its culture and music. Let's go. Did you know that China is the fourth largest country in the world in size and has a population of over 1.3 billion? and it's one of the oldest civilizations and home to iconic things like the Great Wall of China. And panda bears. Oh. Wow, we made it. Now that we've learned a little about the country, let's learn about its music. Traditional Chinese music sounds, well, a lot different than what you might hear on an American radio station. Today, we're going to talk about one particular element of Chinese music, and that's called the pentatonic scale. For this next activity, you can bring out your craft piano from video one and play along where prompted. The pentatonic scale is a very easy scale to learn, and you'll probably hear how symbolic it is of Chinese music. Let's listen to me play it one time. If you noticed I only used the black keys, then you're right! One of the many ways you can play the pentatonic scale on the piano is by only using the black keys. So let's pull out our craft piano and try to play it along with me. One more time. Great job, everybody. Now let's put our craft pianos away for now and learn about two other instruments you can hear in Chinese music. The first instrument we're going to meet is called the pipa. The pipa is almost 2,000 years old and is a four-stringed plucked instrument similar to the guitar. The word pipa describes the plucking motion of the strings, p to play forward and pa to play backwards. Let's hear an example of a pipa now. The next instrument we're going to meet is called the shao. The shao is a flute made of bamboo and it's played vertically like this instead of a western flute that you might be more familiar with which is played like this. Let's hear an example of the shao now. describe the tone color and sound quality in instruments. Let's listen to an example of the pipa one more time and let's find some adjectives to help describe the timbre of its sound. How about bright or gentle? or metallic. Now let's listen to the shower one more time 
and see if there are any adjectives that we can use to describe that timbre. Would you say that was warm, maybe soft or smooth? Now that we've listened to two instruments that make Chinese music unique, let's listen to a piece of music that was composed almost 1,500 years ago by Yo Sing Nan called Moonlight on the Ching Yang River. This song, Moonlight on the Ching Yang River, has a very descriptive title, also known as a sound painting. And it was given this name by the composer to help us imagine what the piece might be about. Let's go to the craft corner for our next activity. In our last video, we talked about timbre and tone color. And today we've been talking about the timbre and tone color of the pipa and the shao. So with all of that in mind, let's get out our piece of white paper and some markers and see if we can try to draw what this composer was trying to help us visualize. Did you recognize the pipa and the shao that we learned about? What sorts of colors did that song help you imagine? This is what I drew. I was hearing a lot of dark colors. Hey, Captain Joe, what did you come up with?
Oh, I just was able to draw something really simple while listening to this. This is what I came up with. Wow, you're a really fast drawer. Oh, this, I, I mean, thanks, Admiral Emily, but I'm just a beginner, really. That's amazing. Well, thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us as we travel to the country of China. If you'd like to learn more, check out the extension activities listed on the Piano Cleveland website underneath this video. Until next time, this is Admiral Emily. And Captain Joe. Over, Over and out. out.